Hi everybody, my name is Justin Beckett and I am here at Southern Rail Restaurant and we are going to make something amazing together. And uh, for me, one of the most fun things about cooking and cooking in front of people is showing them all the tips and tricks and different things that we're gonna do uh, together. And not only is this one of my favorite recipes, but we are using some amazing ingredients today. So I'm gonna walk you through all the different ingredients. I'm gonna show you and tell you about where they came from. We have an amazing partnership with the uh, Arizona Milk Producers, as well as the Dairy Council of Arizona. So let's jump right in, let's get right up and let's get started. So I have something to admit. In my early life, I had no idea that pimento cheese was a thing. And I'm super bummed and angry about it, but I've been making up for it now. So uh, pimento cheese goes good on everything. It's delicious. I'm gonna show you a couple different applications today. But most important, it's, uh, it's very, it can be personalized and it can be made exactly how you like it or um, trying to impress the neighbors or the friends or whoever's coming over. So let's just take a quick second, kind of walk through some of the ingredients. Uh, starting all the way over here, I have a mixer full of cream cheese. And cream cheese is one of the most important parts of the pimento cheese. Um, and one of the other, the other things in the instructions is that you really want to make sure that it's room temperature. And as you can see, when I turn this on, it's not working, it's all right. Oh, there it goes. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, nice and fluffy and it's loose. It's not chunky and you don't have any of the cold chunks of, of cream cheese. So it is very important that you start at room temperature with your cream cheese. Um, the other ingredients that we have are the green onions and of course jalapenos. Um, and again, this is one of those things if you're like, you know, I'm a super big deal with spicy food, you're gonna throw a ton in there. But if you're kind of taking it easy on friends and family, maybe back off a little bit. Um, we're gonna use bell peppers today. And what we do is we roast the bell peppers, we skin them, we take the seeds out. And, uh, and that's a, a really crucial part of this, of this recipe. And of course, the star of the show, a ton of cheddar cheese. Look at that, that's just a massive pile of it. And I am uh, a big fan of cheese, so you'll hear me talk about that throughout the course of this, uh, this demo here. Uh, so we have the diced jalapenos and the diced up bell peppers. And one of the things that we're gonna see is that these bell peppers don't have a lot of juice in them. And what we've done is we've chopped them up and we've drained them. So we've actually put a little bit like a press on them and got all the liquid from the, from the peppers out. Otherwise your entire cream cheese mixture turns into this pink goo, as opposed to this delicious bell pepper uh, infused cheese dip. Um, a big tub of mayonnaise, lots of more green onions that are chopped up. And then we have all of these ingredients, okay? And we're gonna go through these as we're adding them in, but crystals and vinegar and crab boil. So lots and lots of different uh, cool stuff that we're gonna do, but let's jump right in. Let's get started, okay? So. The first thing we wanna do is of course, make sure that this is whipped, the cream cheese is whipped up. And I've had this going for about 10, 15 minutes before we started, just so that we didn't have to wait and it wasn't super noisy. But the first thing that you wanna add in there is you wanna add all of your mayonnaise. And this recipe that we're making right here is a, a restaurant size batch. So there's quite a few things that, um, or there's quite a, a large volume of stuff here that, that we're gonna be using, which at home you might, you know, just make a one cup batch or a two cup batch. But little inside secret, whatever size you decide to make, I would double it because no matter how much you make or how many friends come over, you're either gonna eat it all or it's gonna be a great snack at midnight in the fridge. So it's really important that you always make a little bit more than you think. So the mayonnaise does a couple things. One, it adds that acidity in there, that little bit of bite. It also adds this really creamy texture and we were actually talking before the demonstration and saying, you know, I'm not a fan of mayonnaise, I'm a fan of mayonnaise. Um, and I think what we can do is we could find things that maybe, you know, you could substitute with. So, you know, maybe a little bit of, of whipped goat cork or maybe a sour cream. Um, so there's definitely no reason to avoid this recipe just because you don't like mayonnaise. So um, we're just gonna whip this enough to combine it. Remember again, the cream cheese has already been fully whipped. So we're not trying to break up the cream cheese or get it smooth, it's already there. And we're just kind of combining in all of that mayonnaise. So this, uh, this KitchenAid is the, the six quart here. So it's probably larger than the one you have at home. But as you can see, this is what we call a one-time recipe for the pimento cheese. And normally we make a six or a 10-time recipe. So you're actually looking at what I call a very small batch of pimento cheese.
One other little trick that I always talk about with uh, new cooks in the kitchen is that you want to make sure that you get all of the food out of the bowl. You want to scrape the bowl. And one of the reasons we say that is because if you start leaving food out of the recipe, then the recipe is different every time. The other reason that we say that is that every single bit of product that's in here costs money, right? So we want to make sure that we are getting everything. So normally we do this in a huge stainless steel bowl. We get nice and dirty. We have these huge lobster gloves. I call them lobster gloves because they're these big red gloves that we put on there. So not all of this is going to fit in here, so I'm just going to do a partial batch just to show you. Now your first inclination is probably grab the cheddar and throw it in here, but the cheddar is actually one of the last things that we're going to add in because we don't want the, the strands of cheese to get too broken up, right? We want them to be kind of toothsome or have, or have an effect on your, on your palate. So, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, okay, a good helping of salt. You really want to put a bunch of salt in there. And the reason that we want to put salt in, in most dishes when we cook them is because uh, salt attacks your tongue and open up, opens up the pores on your tongue and allows you to taste things. So. If you're just getting salt straight, you know, maybe it's a little bit aggressive or it doesn't taste very good, but salt allows you to taste other things. You know, I think uh, a couple other different substitutes that we could do, we talked about the sour cream and we talked about um, one other thing which I can't remember, but you know, another great substitute, oh, the goat cork or, or um, a goat milk product. You could also use like a Greek yogurt. That would be uh, delicious in here as well. But I think, I think maybe for the first time, if you're okay with mayonnaise, that you try the mayonnaise because mayonnaise is not going to be the one thing that kind of, you know, comes through on this recipe and makes you gag or grosses you out. So, all right, Crystal's hot sauce. And Crystal's hot sauce is a Louisiana favorite. And it's one of those things that has a very distinct acidity to it. And it's really important that we get that flavor and that in this recipe. So if you can't find crystals, um, I know that you can, you can buy it online and get it shipped to you, but there's plenty of stores around here that carry it. Um, again, we order crystals by the, by the tub, you know, by the, by the gallon, cases of gallons. So it, it's definitely a, something that we use in a lot of different recipes in this Southern inspired restaurant. So here we go. You, as you can see, we're starting to mix it together. You can see the color changing slightly. You can see that all of these spices are incorporating into the cream cheese and the mayonnaise mixture. Okay. And now what I want to start doing is I want to start adding, well, there's one other ingredient here that I didn't add yet and it's the apple cider vinegar. And that again, is going to give it that punch, that tang, if you will. Okay. So the one other thing that I want to do after I mix this in is I want to start um, incorporating in the, the whole ingredients. So the green onion, the jalapeno, the bell peppers, and then of course the cheese will be the, the finishing piece. So one of my philosophies with cooking is that you want to make sure that you have a lot of different places for your your tongue, your tongue to experience, you know, to send those, those messages to your brain about what you're eating and, and what it's doing to your tongue. So if you have a, a recipe, you don't want it to just be sweet or you don't want it to just be spicy. You want it to be sweet and spicy and sour. So you really want to make sure that when you're cooking, you think about balance and you think about how the flavors are going to come together and how they're going to talk to each other. So that's a really important tip, no matter what you're making. All right, so this is probably going to get pretty messy here because this bowl is completely undersized for the project, but green onions. And you know, we took our time and we chopped them very small, very fine. You want to make sure that um, you don't get one single bite that's all green onion, right? Because that's going to make your, your palate and your tastes do something weird. So we got the green onion in there and that's completely mixed in. And now we're going to start adding in the jalapenos. And this is a very healthy dose of jalapenos. Now. A super important part of jalapenos and using them is that a lot of people will eat a jalapeno that's a slice, right? And it has the um, what's called the rib inside of it, and it also has seeds. 
And the problem with eating the rib and the seeds is that that is where all the power comes from, all the spice. So we uh, basically open up every jalapeno, we remove the rib and the seeds, and uh, what I can do is show you real quick just what that looks like, okay? So you have your whole jalapeno, we usually take off the top, take off the bottom, and we're gonna slice that right in half, okay? And what you're gonna see there is you're gonna see this is where all the heat of a jalapeno comes from, all right, right in there. And the way that we do it is we basically take the knife and we just go right underneath, and right underneath and just slice through that rib. So this is the rib and these are obviously the seeds here and we're just gonna remove that, okay? Then we kind of just give it a little shake and we make sure that there's no seeds in there when we go to start slicing it. Another way is to actually take a small spoon, which this spoon's too big, but you can actually just take the spoon and take it right out. So kind of a messy way of doing it, but you can just scrape it all right out and that way you don't even have to use a knife. When, uh, when I teach cooking classes, one of the things that I always talk about is before moving on to the next step, make sure that you're clean, make sure that you're organized, make sure that you have your mise en place, make sure that everything has a place and everything is where it belongs. Because especially in smaller kitchens and home projects, you can get into a messy situation pretty quickly and you wanna try to avoid that. Now, when I cook at home, I still have a sink full of dishes at the end, but that's just because I use so many darn different things to cook with. All right, so we're getting there, okay? Now, the last couple things that we're gonna add in is the roasted bell peppers. And then once I get those kind of just incorporated, I don't wanna overmix those, and again, you know, we would be dealing with a much bigger bowl normally. But you can see how all of these, we call them knife cuts, right? So the way that we chop up these peppers is important because when you're eating this spread or when you're spreading it on a piece of toast, you're gonna end up getting, um, you know, you're gonna end up seeing all those little specks. So it's important that you want to have nice knife cuts, okay? All right, so once that's fully mixed, we're gonna add in all the cheese. And what I'm gonna do, just so I don't create a huge mess here, is we're actually going to take some of this out. And I'll use all this in a bit. Now, I think uh, one of the things that makes this dish what it is, is of course all the spices and all the chopped up vegetables. But, you know, having good quality dairy, using something that, um, you know, is as fresh as you can get it, shredding it yourself or, or buying it already shredded, as long as it's fresh and delicious. And, you know, we have so much great dairy produced right here in Arizona, why not use local, right? So, so here we go, we're gonna add in a bunch of this. And to be honest, normally I would add all this in, but that's not really gonna happen right now, is it? I mean, I'm magic, but not that much. So this part is important that we don't overmix because again, all these strands of cheese is gonna give us a nice texture and it's gonna help kind of bind this all together. Already I'm making a nice mess here. All right. And you could see how the texture changes almost immediately. It almost gets a little bit drier and it's not as liquid, it's, it's got more you know, substance to it. It's, it's coming together nicely here. Okay. Now in the kitchen we use words like sexy when we describe pimento cheese. And other words too, but we're gonna, you know, this is a midday show here, so we're not gonna get too crazy. All right, so you can see the texture in there. You see all the chunks of cheese. You can see all the different cut vegetables. That's what I'm talking about, all right? That's like, that's, that's some good stuff right there. I'm gonna turn down this pan just a little bit. I just wanted to get it warm for you. Make sure we're nice and clean. We're as much as we can be. You know, my sister and I, we have arguments all the time about who loves cheese more than the other, and our text stri uh, thread ends up being just pictures and memes of cheese, and it, uh, it gets out of control, but I will tell you that 
one of my favorite meals of all was I was hiking in the Swiss Alps and we got to the top of this mountain and there's this place and you sit down and all that's on the table is vegetables and bread. And then they come around with this cart and it's this half wheel of huge cheese and they have this like heating element that just comes down and sinks right on top of it. And they literally take a plate and scrape off the cheese and hand it to you. And that's, that's like, that's what you get. That's your lunch. So those are the types of restaurants I like to eat cheese at, right? Okay, so pimento cheese right here can be served just plain, just like this, all right? So make a nice pile. I always recommend chilling it again after you make it. Most of these ingredients are gonna be cold anyway, but you're gonna wanna chill it uh, after you make it. I like to maybe, you know, if you're gonna serve this to, to fancy people, maybe put a little sprinkling of the jalapenos or the green onions or some of the Old Bay or the Cajun spice, you know, something like that on top just to make it fancy. And then we actually serve it at home with some fresh vegetables. So it's just another play on an artichoke dip or a, you know, a green onion and sour cream dip. So these are all things that you can do to wow and impress your family. The other thing that I recommend with this is a lot of times I'll make a big batch like this and put it in mason jars, you know, like this size and do like a pretty paper wrapping put it on and then give it to people as gifts with you know, a beautiful loaf of noble bread or, or some other local products and people freak out about that, okay? I mean, I know you have to do Christmas cookies and you have to make your favorite jam, but to give somebody a container of pimento cheese and a loaf of bread, friends for life, I guarantee it. So great as a dip, great on its own, great with vegetables, but I wanna show you one more little, uh, little trick that I, that I like to use, I like to do also is I like to make a grilled cheese just straight out of pimento. And uh, you can use butter or you can use mayonnaise on the outside. I know we just spent half the show talking about how much people hate mayonnaise, but it's okay. It's okay, we're gonna get those right in there. I always think this bread looks a little bit like a bunny, right? Just the little, the little shape, so. I'm gonna put that in there and let it get toasty and warm for just a minute, okay? And then we're gonna put the pimento cheese on there and then let it keep cooking. Now, uh, pimento cheese, its roots are obviously in the South, but I think you could take this in all kinds of different directions, right? You could make this into a Brussels sprout and artichoke dip that kind of takes it back to Central California. You could go some sort of an amazing seafood that might take it to the Pacific Northwest. Or, you know, even here we could incorporate I know it's cliche, but like Nopalis or, or um, you know, some, some other local ingredients that could really make this shine. But the bottom line is if you start with really great product, really great cheese, um, really great dairy, I think that this is an amazing thing that makes those elements shine together. And it's one of those dishes that's extremely versatile and we can use it in a lot of different places. So, um, like I said, I'm a fan, so I'm gonna, Toss this guy right on here. I also like this just with toast, you know? So if you just wanted to be toasted bread and grilled cheese or in pimento cheese, that would be delicious also. So the reason that I'm cooking it open face like this is because I want both sides to get seared and to get golden brown. And then I'm actually kind of, you see how I'm smushing it around? Cause this, this bread has such good nooks and crannies that I want to make sure that it gets into all of those. Okay, so one more little dollop here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check right underneath and see how it's toasting. Oh, it's looking good. All right, get a little bit of golden brown on there. That's what we're looking for. And of course the center of the pan is hotter because I'm using a small burner, but at home the burners are larger so more of the area will get toasted. So we'll do a couple more seconds right in there. We'll close it up, slice it up, enjoy it. And you know, that's really kind of the nuts and bolts of pimento cheese. I think it's, I think it's again, one of my favorite dips and spreads. It's one of the things that we have here at Southern Rail. We sell it to go. We have it on, on a couple dishes here on the menu as well. And uh, I, I just don't know very many things that it's not very good on. So that's, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to share it with you today. Oh, this is the, those good crispy Siri noises that you, that you hear. And all of that yellow cheese in there, all that cheddar cheese is starting to melt. You see it, you hear it. And this, this won't be one of those, you know, 
commercials on TV where it's like ooey gooey pulling apart, but it will definitely be one of those experiences that when you put it in your mouth, it's, you wonder why you haven't been doing it your whole life. All right, a nice cut there. And here we go. All right, so I think that this is one of those dishes that you'll want to try at home. Once you get the pimento cheese in your fridge, it lasts a little while. You can keep it for, a, you know, up to a week or so. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, pimento cheese is something that you can come by here. You can grab on your, on your way out the door. You can uh, enjoy here. But what we do right now with it is we actually sell it in small mason jars with some bread and we sell it to go. If you want a large amount of them or if you want to use them for gifts or if you want to um, make a giant container full, uh, just call the restaurant ahead and we can have large containers for you to go. But, um, but basically, you know, for, for, for me, uh, again, this is something that I'm proud of and something that I love to eat and, and I'm, I'm happy to share it with you. So thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm so glad that I got to use some incredible products. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have had a partnership or have this partnership with the, uh, the Arizona uh, milk producers and of course the Dairy Council of Arizona. And um, it, you know, it, it, it's not something that I always think about every day, but my walk-in in my refrigerator is full of dairy products and it's full of, uh, you know, great local farms. And uh, I'm proud of that. So thanks very much and have a great rest of your day.